Well, as we gather here this afternoon, we are here, no doubt, to remember our Lord's sacrifice when he died on the cross, to remember that he, the Son of God, was crucified. But I think it's important for us to, um, not in any way to diminish the physical aspects of crucifixion, but sometimes what can happen to us is we can spend our time focusing on that and certainly is a great indignity for the Son of God to be treated in such a shameful way. But we err if we place the value or the emphasis exclusively on his physical suffering. For although that was horrendous in every way, we do know this, that over 10,000 Jews were crucified during the Roman occupation of the land of Israel. So being crucified in and of itself is, is not all that Jesus did, though it was horrible in every way. What I wanna to suggest to you is that while the physical realities are horrific, the spiritual realities are astounding. To consider what Jesus did on the cross for us is literally what makes Good Friday good. We've learned as we've been making our way through Romans that what happened to Christ on the cross, in a very real sense, once we're saved, it's as if it happened to us as well. That when he died, we died. Remember we saw this in Romans chapter six and verse two. We died to sin. In verse six, Paul clarifies that, for we know that our old self was crucified with him. So in a sense, it's as if we died with him. But beyond that, in Colossians chapter two, the apostle Paul tells us three things about Jesus' death and specifically three things that died with Christ. So I'd like us to look at Colossians two and verse 13 and then we're gonna gather around the table of the Lord. You were dead because of your sins, because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. I want to just point out three things that died with Jesus. Number one, at the cross, your death died with Jesus. Colossians chapter two, verse 13, you were dead because of your sins. What kind of death are we talking about there? Remember, we've talked in Romans that there are essentially three kinds of death, and we have to understand what we're talking about to understand the verse correctly. First of all, there's physical death, which is separation from the living. When somebody's physically dead, they're no longer interacting with the living. Then there is spiritual death, which is separation from God. And then a third kind of death is eternal death, which is separation from the living and from God forever. What we're talking about here is spiritual death, separation from God. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ. On the cross, Jesus destroyed spiritual death for everyone who would believe in him. He destroyed that separation from God. In 2 Timothy, we read this, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality. He destroyed separation from God and in its place, he brought spiritual life, no longer separated from God, but alive to God, aware of God, walking with God, knowing God. He made us spiritually alive. 
Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13, then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all of our sins. At the cross, your death, your spiritual death, died with Jesus. Your separation from God died with him. Number two, at the cross, your debt died with Jesus. Look at it in Colossians. Having forgiven us all our trespasses or all our sins. And I love that word all. Not part, not some, all. Every single sin. How did he do it? By canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. On the cross, God placed on Christ all of our sins. Paul talks about it as a record of debt. That word debt is only used, this particular Greek word, one time in the New Testament, and it's right here. It literally means receipt. You could say canceling the record or the receipt of your life. For example, you go to a restaurant and they bring you, we call it a bill, but essentially it's a receipt. It says you received the following. So you had, you know, queso and chips and you had some guacamole and you had, you know, some burritos and you had a Coke and your friend had some chicken enchiladas and a Coke and now you get the receipt and somebody has to pay for it and your friend has alligator arms. You ever seen that where they have alligator arms, they can't quite reach the receipt so you have to pay because somebody has to pay. Here's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that our life, apart from Christ, before we knew Christ, if he hadn't died on the cross, your life was a receipt. There was a record of every single thing you ordered. Every single thing you did, every evil thought, every evil word, every evil action, every violation of God's law, it's been recorded. It's on a receipt. It's your bill, if you will, for sin. And the receipt goes for miles. Look at this in Colossians having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us. Your debt isn't just a debt, it was an enemy. It was actively working against you. It's not just a record, but it's something that stands accusing you. It's something that stands condemning you. It is something that would seal your fate for all time and eternity as separated from God. It's a hopeless situation because it had the power to send you to hell. And here's the fact, there's nothing, not one thing you and I could do about it. But Paul, the good news is this, Paul says that at the cross, your debt died with Jesus. This is wonderful news, look at it by canceling the record of debt, canceling it. The Greek word for canceling there is very, very dramatic. It's a word used to describe erasing an entire book. I mean, so what happens, remember in Revelation, it says this, the books were opened, the great white throne judgment, the judgment of the damned. It says, I saw a great white throne and him who seated, was seated on it and earth and sky fled from his presence. That's the uncreation of the universe. And the books were opened and the dead were judged 
according to what they had done as was recorded in the books. Jesus referenced that when he said, I tell you the truth, that there will come a day, Matthew chapter 12, when men will give an account of every idle word they've ever uttered. It's shocking. That's the, that's the record, that's the receipt. But when you came to Christ, what happened is that big volume on you, that big volume on John Lindell, it was erased. He took out an eraser and he erased every single page and he made it like it had never been written on before. How did he do it? Through the shed blood of Jesus. That though there was a physical reality to his shed blood, there was a spiritual reality. It was washing away our sins. That's why we sing that song. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How did your debt die? Well, he washed it away, he erased it. He made the pages with all of the charges, your rap sheet, white as snow. Watch this, I love one other phrase. He set it aside, nailing it to the cross. One of the spiritual realities is on the cross, though you couldn't see it, hit your, your sin, the charges against you nailed. Remember Jesus when Pilate wrote and placed above his head, this is the king of the Jews, and he had it nailed above there. That's, that's the charge. The condemned would be marched out to the place of execution. They would have the charge usually strung around their neck so everybody could see what they were accused of. Then it was nailed to the cross. It was above their head so everybody could see it. You know what? On the cross, your charges were nailed there with the charges Pilate had laid on him. Your charges, my my charges, all of our charges, nailed to the cross and erased forever. Well, one more thing happened at the cross, and that is at the cross, your enemy's demonic power died with Jesus. Your enemy, the enemy of your soul, his demonic power died with Jesus. Watch this, this is really fantastic. In this way, he, that's Jesus. Some say it's God the Father, but you could go either way. He disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. Who's that? That's Satan, his demonic horde. He disarmed them. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. I love the way the message puts it because really the message is very, very true to the Greek rendering in the words as we're gonna see. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross. And he marched them naked through the streets. What Paul's talking about here, what he's picturing is a Roman triumph. He, he uses that illustration frequently in the New Testament. What a Roman triumph would be is, is when a general had taken the Roman legions into an area that was hostile to Rome and had conquered it thoroughly. You couldn't just win a battle. A battle wasn't enough for a triumph. You had to win the war. And when you won the war and the enemy was totally defeated, what they do is the legions would return to Rome and the Roman general ahead of them and the emperor would welcome them into the city. And there would be a ginormous parade and the legionnaires would come parading through the city and the general at the head of them, victorious, triumphant. And they would be bringing the plunder they had captured from this land and they would be carrying it and showing the, the Roman citizens, listen, look, look at what we're victorious and look what we got. And then at the end of the procession, in chains, naked, would be the enemy generals and some of their top fighting men. And they would be paraded through the streets at the following behind the army and it would be Rome's way of saying, remember those people you heard so much about who terrorized you? 
Remember that enemy that you thought was gonna invade us? Remember that, that group of people that you heard about and people were saying, I don't know if we can beat them? Look at them. They're naked and they're in chains and you don't have anything at all to fear from them. That's what, that's what this is saying. When he, it says he disarmed in the original, it means he undressed them. He stripped them. He stripped them of their power. He stripped them of their authority. On the cross, Jesus Christ stripped demonic power of its authority. On the cross, he rendered Satan ineffective in the life of the believer. He exposed them, he defeated them so that we could see how powerless they really are and that they no longer have any power, any hold on us. And he shamed them publicly and he took the victory. They thought they had won. On the cross, they thought, oh, we've won. And instead he used this, his death to destroy their demonic power and expose them as powerless against him and his people. Why do we call it Good Friday? Because at the cross, your spiritual death died. Your separation from God ended. To as many as received him, to those who believed in him, he gave the right to be called the children of God. No longer distant, but a son or a daughter of the king. At the cross, your debt died with Jesus. Your sin debt, that record, that receipt of a life of sin nailed to the cross and the record expunged by the blood of Christ so that every page that had all of these things you had done is totally gone, totally erased. That is why there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus because it's all been erased. It's all been expunged. It's gone. There's no record of your sin. So why are you thinking about it? God has forgotten it. He's erased it. And finally at the cross, your enemy's demonic power died with Christ. He was stripped. He was disarmed. He was shown to be powerless. That's why in 1 John chapter 5, it says, and the evil one cannot touch him. As John's talking about things we know, we know God hears us and we know, we know that God uh, answers prayer and we know the evil one cannot touch us. And all of that goes back, not to your and my ability, but goes back to his accomplishment on the cross. That's why it's Good Friday. The Son of God came to give himself as a sacrifice that death might die, that deaths might be canceled, that demonic power might be broken. Amen.